Hello everyone and welcome back to Classic Comics. So today I'm reviewing Future State Justice League number one. And to start off, I like the cover here. You know, it's a pretty standard team cover, but it works. So the issue starts with a, we get a voiceover in these captions here. Someone talking about the Justice League, this new version of the Justice League and how they're great heroes and how the world you know, loves them and all that stuff. And we discover that this person is, in fact, a T.O. Morrow, who is, of course, an old villain of the Justice League, although how he wound up in this kind of misshapen cyborg form, you know, I don't really know. But anyway, what we find out is that this is a meeting of the Legion of Doom, or this future version of it. And along with Tio Maro, we have Professor Ivo. And then we have this character, Despera, who appears to be the daughter of Despero. Amaze X, kind of a new version of Amazo. Cobalt Blue, who is a new version of an old Flash foe from the 90s. Screech Owl, who appears to be a Batman enemy, and he apparently has some connection to the Court of Owls, I'm guessing. He says something about how Batman has brought him back from the dead. I don't know. The Flood, who is an Aquaman foe, and then Ultraviolet Lantern, who is a Green Lantern enemy. And then Professor Ivo says, this time we won't be fighting them alone. During my research in the Hall of Justice, and that's where they're meeting, by the way. They're meeting in the Hall of Justice, which apparently has been closed down for many years. And he says, I have uncovered a bit of hubris and mercy from the League's past that we can use to doom their future. Tomorrow belongs to us. Tomorrow the Justice League will die. So then it skips to the next day. And the Justice League has arrived to investigate the death of the Legion of Doom. The Legion of Doom are all dead and lying scattered around the Hall of Justice now. And so the issue becomes kind of a mystery as to who killed them and what happened to them. And as they mentioned, you know, the Legion of Doom are pretty powerful. They're not pushovers, so who could have possibly done this to them? And they decide to have Green Lantern, you know, this new version of Green Lantern, who becomes the investigator who investigates the crime scene to try and figure out what happened, because according to them, she's the greatest detective in the multiverse, apparently. We also find out that the downfall of the previous league, part of it was that as a Superman, of course, this is Jonathan Kent, and he says the team, it got too big, there were too many members, then a member uncovered all the Justice League secrets and used them to hurt the team and betray the league. So we don't know specifics, but apparently in the wake of that, it was decided that the League needed new rules basically to stop sharing their identities and basically keep more secret and separate lives from each other so that a member couldn't infilt or an enemy couldn't infiltrate the team and then use their personal secrets against them. So then the rest of the League leaves, allowing Green Lantern to investigate the crime scene. Then we get the scene with Superman and Wonder Woman where, again, they sort of talk about the way that the League has changed, about how they have these new rules where they don't share each other's lives and all that. And then we get a series of Green Lantern investigating the crime scene here. Then we go to Amnesty Bay to uh, Aquawoman. And, of course, this is Aquaman and Mara's daughter. And then this new Flash arrives, and I don't know, I guess they have some sort of thing going on, maybe, I don't know. But of course, this is kind of a breach of these rules they have, where they're really not supposed to meet away from League business, or meet on their personal time. And then some sort of alarm goes off, and they go outside to find Superman waiting for them. And they want to know, you know, what are you doing here? You're really not supposed to be here. This is against the rules. Meanwhile, back at the crime scene, Superman arrives to ask Green Lantern how the investigation is going. 
And then, of course, she's in contact with the other League members, so they realize Superman is in two places, so obviously something's wrong here. And then Superman and Wonder Woman attack Flash and Aquawoman with some kind of device that appears to disintegrate them. First they get Flash, then they get Aquawoman. And then this other Superman who's... Uh, at the crime scene with Green Lantern, then attacks Green Lantern, and Green Lantern says that she's figured out who it is, she knows who killed the Legion of Doom, and she says that it was you. And then again, Superman pulls some kind of device out and uses it on her, which makes her seem to vanish or disintegrate. Then we see these other scenes where Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman are also defeated using these devices. Then this portal opens up and all these other versions of the Justice League members arrive. And they say, uh, we hope the Justice League enjoys the hell we, uh, we were trapped in. So the League isn't dead. They've been sent somewhere else, trapped in some other place. And then the one impersonating Superman says, it's time to put phase two of our plan into effect. And he says, Teo Morrow thought he could use us to kill and replace the Justice League, and that he could control us. Now, I won't show the last page, because there's a, a big surprise at the end, and I really liked it. I really, I overall really enjoyed this issue. The art is pretty good, and the writing is solid, and I really like the choice of the villain they've used to introduce this new version of the Justice League. I won't say who it is. It's kind of a surprise, but I would encourage you to go get this. Pick it up and check it out. I think it's pretty good and worth your time. Rocha, his art is, I think, quite good. It could be a little more dynamic, you know, but, uh, you know, no complaints. And Williamson's writing is pretty solid, so overall, I think this is actually pretty good. I do think... You know, there is a little bit of duplication here because you have Wonder Woman and Superman meeting and talking about how, you know, well, we're really not supposed to be meeting on our personal time. And then right after that, we get a scene of Aqua Woman and the Flash meeting and saying, you know, we really shouldn't be meeting on our personal time. I don't know if you needed both of these scenes. But other than that, the storytelling is pretty good. And, yeah, overall, I give this a thumbs up. I really enjoyed this issue. I do like, I think they could have done a little more to get into the characters of the various League members. Batman, you know, this new version of Batman, he's barely a cameo. And another thing, in the Batman comic, his mask completely covers his face, yet in this, it's, you know, he has the opening, just like Bruce Wayne did, so they might want to get all their ducks in a row as far as making the characters look uniform from title to title. But other than that, and another thing is I was sorry to see this version of the Legion of Doom killed. I, I, I liked these villains. I thought they looked interesting. I wanted to know more about them, more about their backstories. But <laughs> they just immediately get killed off, so too bad. But as I say, the villains they picked for this story I really liked. Without going into detail, I mean, there's some things you can tell. They're shapeshifters, and they're also clearly pretty powerful. So those are a couple of hints as to who these villains are, but I won't give it away. Now, the second part of this issue is Justice League Dark. And, eh, I mean, overall, so this one, uh, written by Ram V with art by Marcio Takara. And overall, I just found this to be pretty much a bore. Uh, without getting dragged in, into the details, in this future DCU, Merlin, the wizard, has been going around destroying or acquiring all these sources of magic in the world. And then the Justice League Dark is trying to pick up the pieces and figure out what's going on or something like that. And without getting, again, dragged into details, they uh, eventually find out, you know, their search for answers leads them to John Constantine and to 
uh, Dr. Fate. And I mean, I don't know. I, I just found this thing to be a bore. I really wasn't interested at all. The art is okay, but the writing is just didn't interest me interest me at all. So, I mean, as far as this story goes, it's it's really not worth your time. But this Justice League story at the front is. I I really liked it. I I like this team. I like them. So. Yeah, I say thumbs up on this. It's worth your time and give it a look. Let me know what you think in the comments. And also, please do like this video if you enjoyed this review. Also, please sub and hit the bell for notifications. And I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching.